Hello there friends, this is your Humphreys. Glad to be with you and share with you another word from the Bible. I want to speak to you about a 10 minute message on the fact that the Bible is reliable. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is the truth. And we can stand upon His promises. And we can wait for them because they will come our way when we believe it. The Bible teaches that. I want you to know that the Bible is truly reliable. We find over in the book of Hebrews in the 13th chapter some good words from the Bible. Let your conversation, this is in the 13th chapter of Hebrews, let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. <clears throat> you that believe in Jesus. Be content with what you do have because you've got Jesus. Be content with what you've got because you've got the best. You've got him. And that we may boldly say that I will not fear what man can do, for the Lord is with me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do. Don't be afraid what people can do to you, dear friend. You belong to God. Jesus Christ holds you in his hand. Whatever happens is for your good and for his glory. Wait on the Lord and let him be your strength. He loves you very much. He's going to carry you through. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. Hallelujah. And we need to recognize a fact that he can still forgive and heal and save and, and give us strength and lead us and direct our paths. Oh, praise the Lord. He's the same. So the Bible is truly reliable. Over in the book of Proverbs in the third chapter it says, <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Do not try to figure it all out yourself. Turn to God and ask Him to help you, to give you wisdom to know what to do, to give you guidance in your decisions, to help you find a way when there seems to be no way. <coughs> For God is there to help you and cares for you. He knows where you are. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. And so God will take care of you and lead you and guide you in the way you need to go. He will direct your path when you trust Him. The Bible is reliable. Praise the Lord. Oh, in the book of Hebrews, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, in the book of Jeremiah, in the uh, ninth chapter of Jeremiah, in verses 23 and 24, here's some more words that we need to recognize and to be able to, to rec uh, live, uh, live by them, to stand on them, to believe in them. And that is this, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, and nor let the mighty man glory in his strength. Let not him that uh, has glory uh, in his riches. Let not him glory in those riches. But let him that glorieth, glorieth in this, that he knows me, that I am the Lord, and that I am the God, and delight in the, and I delight in you, saith the Lord. If you must glory, glory in the Lord God, that knows, that glory in the fact that you know the Lord. I'm talking to some of you that know the Lord. He is your God. He is your strength and hope. You talk to Him. You call on Him. You believe in Him. And you love Him. And that's the ones that's going to get through. And all oh, praise God. He wants that for all of you. The Bible. The Bible is reliable. Over in the book of uh, First Kings, we read a good word. And that was... A, uh, a word here in the uh, 19th chapter of 1st Kings where Elijah the mighty prophet of God was told by God to go to the mountain and wait in the cave and he went to the mountain and waited in the cave and there was a great earthquake that shook the mountain but it said God was not in the earthquake and then there was a great fire that burned all around that mountain but God was not in the fire and then there was a great wind a great wind that blew 
and the trees bent and, and the rocks fell, but God was not in the wind. And then in verse 13 it says that uh, after the earthquake, after the earthquake, the Lord was not in that. But after the fire, a still, small voice spoke to his heart. And then it says, when he, when it was so, when he, and when Elijah heard it, he wrapped himself in his mantle and stood before his God and said, What would you have me do? You see, God is not always into mighty, mighty things that are earth-shaking. But he's there in that still, small voice inside of you, dear Christian. And he speaks. The Holy Spirit is in you. And he speaks with that still, small voice. And he tells you, speaking to your conscience. And he helps you to find out what you need and ought to do. You're led by your initiative. You're led by, by the fact that you have that inside of you telling you where you ought to go and what you ought to do. And so I praise God that the still small voice of the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And you need to follow him as best you can. We thank God for that because it's the word of God. And the word of God and the Bible is reliable. Over in the book of Luke, the ninth chapter, it's Jesus said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So we must not keep looking back at what has happened and wonder why, what we can do or why we did this or that. No, no. Don't look back. Just keep looking forward. Try to forget those things behind you the good things as well as the bad things and the heartaches. I've had so many wonderful things happen in my life, but I'm not to all count on those things and look back to those things. I've had some heartache in my life. I've lost my loved ones. I've lost my son. I've lost, I've lost my wife. I've lost all. Oh, I've had problems and sorrow in my life. But praise God, I don't need to look back on those things. I have to look forward forward to pots before me and press on to the mark of the prize which is in Christ our Lord. God bless you dear friend. The Lord loves you and he's with you to help you to get through. Over in the book of 1 John in the 4th chapter we read these words. He that loves knows God for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God that he gave his only begotten son that we might live through him. He gave his only begotten son upon that cross who died for you, paid for all your sins. Hallelujah. They're all paid for. All of them. Forever. Hallelujah. Now then, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave his son a sacrifice for our sins. So here is the truth that God loves you so much. He gave himself for you. When he gave his only begotten son, he was giving part of himself. For God, the Father, and the Son are one. And upon that tree he died for you so that you would live forever. And gave his life so you could live for him and with him. And then it says, If brother, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. We ought to love others. Love others, even the unlovely. Because God loved you when you were unlovely. Oh, praise God. And he loves me. He loves me. He loves me even now when I make my mistakes. He still loves me. I say, Lord, forgive me and help me do better. Amen. So stay close to him. And know that God loves you. And then walk in that love. And you'll keep on walking. One other scripture. And then I'm through. And that is, the Bible is reliable. I want you to be sure that you're saved by the grace of God. Instead of going to hell when you die, you'll go to heaven because you believe in Jesus who paid for all your sins. Nobody in heaven will be there whose sins have not been forgiven because it's a holy place before a holy throne. But all your sins are forgiven at the cross. And when you believe in Jesus, you're clean forever. The Bible says in Romans 10:13. It says this, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. My dear friend, you are included in that word, whosoever. Whosoever, if you feel a, a, a desire right now to know that your name is written in heaven, pray this brief prayer. Stand on the word of God. Pray it because he said, whoever calls on him shall be saved, not maybe so. Pray a prayer like this and say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. I believe he paid for all my sins. I believe he's coming back. Oh, come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Amen. Pray a prayer like that. Oh, praise God, and your name will be written in heaven. The Bible is reliable. And then according to the word of God, find you a good church. Be baptized if you need to be baptized. Well, we find a good church and worship God with his people. Stand on the word of God and you're standing on holy ground. You're standing on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. There are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Amen. God bless you. And in the name above every name. Amen and amen.